Hi there, Lisa Rana here, and I'm so excited you're joining me for today's Assemble This video. I have two beautiful watercolor cards to share. I'm using the Karen Brush Marker Pros to color in this darling little hummingbird, and then assembling two different cards for inspiration. I'm featuring the new June 2021 sentiment kit from Unity Stamp Company. It has this darling hummingbird image and a, a great mix of sentiments to match. I have the hummingbird image pre-stamped on some Fabriano cold press watercolor paper and I'm using Versifying Claire Nocturne ink because it's watercolor friendly plus a couple different sizes of watercolor brushes plus the Karen Brush Marker Pro watercolor pens. I picked up the lipstick red color first and I'm just coloring in those tiny little hearts and then I'm going to add it to the center of the, the bird here, kind of his breast color. I'm going to make red and I, uh, I'm, I've started to use the method of picking up the color straight from the brush and then using the, the aqua brush to add that to my paper. I kind of like that method. I'm still working with it. Uh, these brush markers or the, the aqua watercolor brushes I don't use very often so this was a new method for me. I'm trying to figure out the, the ratio of the water to the, the pigment from the Karen markers and as I move along with these image, images I, I, I get that feel a bit better. That breastplate, I ended up using a lot of water and I needed to back off a bit, but I didn't know in the beginning. So I'm just trying to get the feel of my brushes with the, the Karen markers so I can pick up that pigment and kind of move it with the, with the water. I'm also using lime green and lush green. That's what I'm creating around the edge of my hummingbird kind of doing the darker color of the lush green around the edge and then coming in with that bright lime green and blending that out. Another thing I found, because I used so much water, it blended really easy. I probably should have waited a bit or used my heat gun to kind of set those layers of colors before I moved on to the next one. Again, I'm just kind of learning this process as I'm going along. And uh, so that's a tip for you is to use less water um, but enough to move the the watercolor on the paper and then to dry each layer so they don't blend so much together you can see that red is really bleeding into the greens which is not a bad look i actually was kind of going for that there's this watercolor genre where everything kind of bleeds and blends on its own. So that was kind of the inspiration for this, but I think I would change a few things the next time I attempted this type of watercolor. So I dried all that. I did a bit of brown on the, the branch there, and that is cocoa. And then I dried all that with my heat gun, trying to create a layer where I can layer on top of that and create a bit more dimension of that color and vibrancy. Here I'm using much less water. I'm trying not to squeeze that water pen so I don't get as much water flow. And it's layering up on top of what I previously done. This is what's really going to create the vibrancy to your image. Uh, you can just go with one layer of color. Um, that's not a bad look. Uh, but the the layering of the different different um, levels of watercolor is what's really going to create interest to your image. You could go 20 layers and it will look different from that first one. I generally do one or two layers with watercolor just because I'm inexperienced with it, but I do like the dimension that it creates. So I dried that first layer and now I'm just adding in another layer of color using the same colors that I used before just kind of creating that dimension and vibrancy that I'm looking for. So here I just did the bird again and then to finish off the little flowers that are included on those branches I picked up some canary 
yellow and I'm doing the flowers in that and then I have a bit of olive green for the, the stems of those flowers. So again I'm just kind of picking up the color from the brush using my aqua pen and then using that to apply it to the to the paper. I found that using less water just really went better. Um, I can always add a bit more but squeezing that pen and picking it up just really added too much water to the paper. Next I'm going to add a bit of a, a shadow around the, the hummingbird. I picked up the cool aqua color scribbled that down on my media mat here and then added a bit of water to kind of dilute it and soften it and then I'm using my aqua pen to pick that up and spread that around the edge of the bird. I probably should have dried the bird with my heat tool before I attempted this but again I was kind of figuring out how all that blending of watercolor worked. Um, I, I had this inspiration in my head of what I wanted to happen. Um, but yeah, it works. You know, whatever uh, the result is, I was happy with. It was just kind of fun to play around with the colors and the medium and to see what ended up. I may change some things down the road, but I kind of like the way all of this ended up bleeding and combining together. Uh, it just created a, a fun look that I was actually really going for. So there we go. We have our first little hummingbird all colored up. I'm going to set that aside to dry completely. Then I die cut that out with a scallop stitch die. I picked some pattern paper that was a nice soft background for that image. I did not want to fight against the, the vibrancy of the hummingbird, so I picked a nice soft kind of mint color, covered my card base in that. Just for a bit of texture, I grabbed some burlap string in ivory, and I'm going to wrap that around my hummingbird panel. The, the scallop panels actually make this super easy. I can use the notches in those scallops to really line up the wrapping of that, that string. I wrap it around three times and then I'll just tie a sweet little bow and I use that and I tie it around all three layers. It just kind of cleans that up for me. I like that look of where all three layers are tied together and I tie that into a sweet little bow and I'll just quickly snip off those tails and then pop that up on the front of the card using some foam adhesive right in the center just like that and then make sure that my bow is the correct size if it is then I just trim those tails one more time to the length that I like next I have this happy birthday sentiment that's in the kit just kind of playing around with the placement on where I want it on the card front going to add a bit of foam adhesive to pop that up, create a little bit more dimension. And I'm pretty sure I like it right here. I don't know, just looks good to my eye. Maybe different for you. Not not a bad decision. <laughs> just go whatever feels good for you. Next, I'm going to add a bit of Nouveau drops. These are the clear, I think they're called morning dew. I always like one big drop and then a couple of smaller drops and then that finished off that first card. I colored up another hummingbird same way with those Karen markers and this time I gave him a purple center breast. I just thought that would be kind of fun to, to switch up the color of this guy. Covered the card front in a, a deeper teal color just a little bit different and then added a bit of interest using this flower pattern paper. I just like the bold contrast against that sweet little hummingbird and I like the way this layout turned out so it's kind of adding a bit of fun and interest with the pattern papers but not really taking away from that, that darling little hummingbird. So once that was set on those layers of the pattern paper. I'm just wrapping around that same ivory burlap twine. I just love this stuff. It adds the sweetest little 
dimension and texture to a card. I do just really love a bow. <laughs> There's something about it that just finishes a card off for me. So I'm again, I wrap that around three times, tied it around all three layers, and then I'm just fiddling with that to get a good placement for it. I like the way that the bow was at the bottom. It did not distract from the sentiment and it kind of balanced out the the dimensions of the card. There's a sentiment, a bird, and then a bow in kind of like a sweet little triangle. Popped up that hummingbird panel with some foam adhesive right on top of everything, just like that. And I'm gonna fiddle with that bow, make sure it's the size I like, trim off the tails. And then again, I went in with some of those clear Nouveau drops just to kind of add a little bit more interest and dimension. So here is the first finished card. I just love the look of that watercolor and the, the matching soft background paper. The little bit of twine and Nouveau drops just added the perfect touches to the sweet, simple, darling little birthday card. And for the second card, we have a mix of boulder pattern paper for that watercolored hummingbird. It's the same soft embellishments to finish everything off nicely, but still to keep that hummingbird the, the main focal image. And of course, I'll have all the supplies linked in the description of this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And of course, subscribe if you really enjoy these type of videos. If you have any questions or a sweet comment, post below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.